There you go. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much. Please have a seat, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my guest tonight served six terms in Congress, is now a senior political commentator for CNN. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. So I'm free. Out of uh, there. <laughs> well, that, that leads to my first question. Is you're, you're out of Congress for the first time in, in 12 years? 12 years. Is it? Well, what's, what's it like uh, on the outside? Now? It's actually really great. I mean, you know, mm. I... If you'd known it would be this good, you would have... <laughs> I probably sooner. would have left a lot earlier. Uh -huh. But, no, I mean, it's, it's, you miss parts of it, you know? There's, there's sometimes in the fight you wish you could be there to kind of have your say on some of this stuff. But when I watch that speaker fight happen and some of those things, I mean, sitting through one speaker vote mm -hmm. is miserable. Sitting through 15 is insanity. And I'm so glad I wasn't there for that. Yes, but, <laughs> okay, maybe not be there. Uh, but was it gratifying at all to watch Kevin McCarthy squirm for those 15 <laughs> votes? To have to kowtow to guys like, Gates yeah, to actually go hat in hand to a man like Matt Gates mm. wasn't that pleasant? It was a little gratifying. Uh, you know, the the tough thing is you know how bad that is for the country, right? Because you're you're making commitments to people that I frankly don't think have this country's heart in, in their mind. It's all about their own fame. It's about their attention. But I got to tell you, you know, the day Kevin McCarthy went to Mar-a-Lago, a couple weeks after January 6th, he changed the trajectory of the party, I think. And I After think... having said, right after January 6th, that yep. the president bears some responsibility for what happened. Yeah, and then he forgot that. And so watching him have to, have to mm -hmm. you know, struggle a little bit, yeah, I'd say there was a little part of me that kind of enjoyed that. Yeah. And, and you have never been that soft-spoken. You speak your mind, you're pretty frank. But you recently, I think this was just last week, um, you said this on a, a podcast. Um, you had some choice words about uh, the new speaker, Jim. Kevin's a piece of <laughs> and let's just be honest about this, because he will say whatever he needs to say to stay in power. I'm not even saying that gratuitously to be mean to him. It's just a fact. I didn't know the mic was on. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear, you said that after you left office, I know. right? Yeah, I, I did. Okay. I did. How many members of the Republican caucus called you up and went, oh, thank you for saying that? <laughs> I, I think they're all scared. I'm probably going to dime them out if they do. But yeah, I still get people that call me and they're like, you know, we wish we could get through this. You know, I was getting a lot of information during the speaker's vote because I know what. I know the dynamics that were at play there, and yeah. it's just, it's miserable. So and what's the deal now that is, is that any one person in the House can call for essentially like a snap vote and say uh, he has to run for speaker again? Yeah, so they basically they can call this, it's like a no confidence, the motion to vacate the yep. chair, you have to go through all of that. Anybody in the House can do it now. And this Republican was Republican or Democrat. Republican or Democrat. And this was held as like kind of a sort of Damocles over prior speaker's heads. So... You know, Boehner, for instance, wanted to cut a deal with the Democrats on debt. They would hold this over his head, you know, Paul Ryan. And so they changed the threshold so that it couldn't be used as a weapon. Now it's going to be weaponized again. And as we get to the debt limit, you know, we approach it, approach it today, but we have some time with these measures taking place. They're going to say, these 20 people or whatever are going to say, Kevin, if you cut a deal with the Democrats, if we don't pass the debt limit, you know, uh, we're going to vacate the chair. That's a scary thing because we have never as a country never breached the debt limit. We came as close as we could, basically, in 2011 when I was there, and it had real effects on the economy. Technically speaking here, if Kevin McCarthy actually uh, grew a pair and said, hey, we have to investigate George Santos, could <laughs> Santos call for a snap election? Yeah, yeah, he could, he could. <laughs> wow. <laughs> in, his, in his recounting, he probably already has a couple of times. Now... <laughs> That's the gun. You're, you're petitioning for Santos to resign. You're, 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 you've, you've organized a petition online for that to happen. Um, t tell me why you're doing that. So uh, he made some comment about, you know, look, if, 
170,000 people voted for him to put him in office or something. He goes, if 170,000 people want me out, I'll leave. So we want to get 170,000 people. I don't think he specified where they had to be from. Is that an aberration or is that an extension of um, normalizing the amount of lies that the former president told? I, and and yeah. people like Marjorie Taylor Greene or, or, or Boebert or Gosar. We're in a dangerous place. So Obviously, he in and of himself and completely lying about everything with no mooring to anything true whatsoever is an aberration. But the problem is people are defending him. Not just because there's only a five-seat majority, but because now politics is all about just owning the other side. If you can say something mean about the other side, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter how you lie. And that is a problem when you become unmoored to truth, when you lie about an election being stolen, when you lie about different things, truth all of a sudden is really easy to get away from. It's really easy to make stuff up. And so I think he probably wouldn't be there without the lies that had preceded this moment. We have to take a quick break, but stick around. We'll be right back with more Congressman Adam Kingsinger, everybody.